So here's something interesting. Over the last six months or so, there's been a significant number of South Africans who are living abroad who are now inquiring about what it takes to come back home. Now, this isn't an episode of Kumbule Kai, but actual observations from Tax Consulting South Africa, who have noted that expatriates are coming back to South Africa despite the many challenges that we are faced with. Expats from the United Kingdom, Ireland and Germany, as well as the Middle East and the United States, are finding out that the grass isn't always greener on the other side due to various factors such as the cost of living, high inflation, strict regulations and even the weather. Some of the push factors cited by many expats for leaving the countries that they went to are that there are things like steady increases in the cost of living, especially in the EU nations, high inflation, unpleasant weather, strict regulations that affect all aspects of daily life, and cultural differences. Some expats have reached their mandatory retirement ages in the Middle Eastern countries, which actually prevent them from renewing their residency permits. According to data collected by CNBC Africa, over 350,000 high-skilled South Africans have returned home since 2008. According to the UN report, by the end of 2020, 900,000 South Africans were living in other countries and territories, up from 780,000 in 2015. Worryingly though, three times as many people immigrated from South Africa between 2015 and 2020, over 128,000 people, than between 2010 and 2015, 43,000 people. This is what the data is showing us. Now what's concerning is that a lot more younger people are considering to leave. That's the potential real loss to the country and its tax base. The UK has been the recipient of the most migrant stock from South Africa, with almost a quarter of a million residents listing South Africa as their birth country. This is followed by Australia, the USA and New Zealand. According to Stats South Africa, between 2006 and 2016, most immigrants headed to Australia. The rest of the top 10 destinations were the UK, the USA, New Zealand, Germany, American Samoa, UAE, Cuba, Canada, and China. The first two positions on the list account for more than 51% of immigrating South Africans though. But for those coming back, the reasons for returning vary from shifting ideas around remote work, new professional opportunities opening up, and more. The countries that they are leaving have their own issues. For instance, in the UK, the cost of living is an ongoing issue with many deciding between food and heating. According to The Economist, overall food prices in 2022 were 12.8% higher than a year earlier. Australia is now experiencing a housing crisis. Those requesting assistance from homeless services has increased by 27% as a result of this. The declining rental market in major cities has been blamed for this. Many expats are actually deciding to come back home to South Africa and spend their Australian dollars here to establish a new residence because there isn't much space nor real public service aid where they're coming from. In many American cities, property values have surged and many homes are selling for more than what they're even being listed for. In addition, the rising cost of living among young Americans makes home ownership impossible without any sort of government assistance. The primary cause of the housing problems in America is a shortage of supply, while there are other factors at play as well. Due to a lack of market possibilities, millennials tend to choose longer term rentals. The subject of mass shootings is another thing. In the first month of 2023, there were already 38 mass shootings. This is according to CNN. Although there is a serious crime problem in South Africa, gang wars, rivalries, and taxi disputes, these are the three main causes of domestic mass shootings which typically occur in a specific location and are not as widespread as in America. The property market in South Africa is also playing a role in re-immigration. Expats who are returning to South Africa in droves, contrary to popular opinion, aren't all settling in the Western Cape. Although Cape Town is a preferred destination, Joburg isn't that far behind and it's also offering a better value at the sub-luxury market. South Africans of all ages who have been living and working abroad, sometimes for many years, are now returning to Johannesburg to take up new corporate jobs or to establish new businesses. These people need a place to live. Most are highly skilled individuals with years of experience, which is a benefit to South Africa. On top of that, many of those returning are realizing that they can purchase a home at a much better value using their euros, pounds, or dollars. Because for the same amount of dollars or euros, they get much larger and much more expansive properties back home.
While semigration has contributed to the price explosion in Cape Town's most sought after neighborhoods, Johannesburg's market has increased moderately, with sellers in the luxury market now frequently willing to accept 30% or even 40% less than what their properties were listed for. In reality, the two markets of Cape Town and Joburg are frequently at different stages of the real estate cycle. Returning foreign investors, however, are making a big push into the 5 to 10 million rand sub-luxury real estate market as they discover how much property they can actually afford in Johannesburg versus Cape Town. A recent study by retirement income specialist MGM Advantage showed for six months that more than 6 million UK adults are actively planning to retire abroad. In addition, more than 5 million US adults have already retired to countries where their dollar goes further. And that number continues to rise every single year. An issue that has started to creep up though and is bubbling under. It's now not a secret that South Africa is a great currency arbitrage market with influential, young and very famous people like Iman Gadzi speaking highly of South Africa and Cape Town's high quality of life and how far his money stretches right here. More and more global nomads are choosing South Africa. Consequently, we've also been seeing the rise in digital nomads in places like Cape Town who are essentially remote workers employed by foreign companies but work from here. But this hasn't gone down well with people in places like Cape Town where a lot of these nomads are finding a place to work from. The president recently announced visa regulation amendments to allow for skilled individuals to propel the country's competitiveness and its economic growth. South Africa isn't the first nation to introduce this as it has been implemented in places like Cape Verde, Seychelles, Mauritius and Namibia. The SA Department of Home Affairs had gazetted proposed amendments including the digital nomad visa and the public was invited to feed back to the government by the 29th of March. No matter how we look at it, South Africa is still very attractive to various types of people. This will bring upsides and downsides for cities and metros alike. But what we must do is measure the positives and reduce the negatives. Highly skilled South African people coming back home is a good thing. Kusakaya up and we want them back. Digital nomads bring foreign currency, but they must be regulated and can't be prioritized more than locals. South Africans must still be able to enjoy the environment that their country has to offer. That's why I've always personally wondered why we don't have a South African specific rate for touring, exploring and holidaying in our own country like what other places do. South Africa, for all its challenges, still offers opportunities for both personal and professional growth due to its strategic location and still being seen as the true gateway to Africa. We also have an advanced finance and banking sector. Our country is a relatively cost-effective and attractive destination for entrepreneurial ventures and foreign investors looking to capitalize on the continent's potential. What are your thoughts on all of this? If you're South African living abroad or you're also thinking of coming back home, let's chat about it in the comments.